Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It On. Yeah. Let's wrap up this Crookspur business. Mm -hmm. Enemies ahead. Where? There's Master Kuo himself. Sequoia is down. Oh, no. As they clean up all the rabble. Sweet redemption. Take him. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That order's too tall. Something I can do? Leave it to me. There's a wall up in. Right. Head of Master Kua. On it. The Ring of Overseeing. This marble statue appears to be a replica of a popular Grand Valiant piece titled Ducala Serre. on the cutthroat and we'll send a dare into their back line. Just like so. There. Yeah. 
That's not very helpful. <clears throat> I... What do you need? Perfecto! <laughs> yeah? Yeah! What do you need? Let's go! Yeah, right away. I've got So it. I definitely underestimated that fighter talent. The name always eludes me. Uh, it's not unbreakable, right? It was when you activate. The unbending. Hmm? Sure. Not a speck of dust rests on the furniture. Shining Bulwark, the Large Shield, Exceptional, and Defensive Beacon. The shield is a symbol of determination and resilience. Aura grants nearby allies bonus armor rating, but not the wielder. The Shining Bulwark originated as the common shield of a guard captain of Old Valia. While escorting her master and his delegation of nobles to negotiate with political dissidents in one of the colonies, the captain received word that the people of the region had risen in revolt, declaring themselves free of Old Valia. The entire city descended into chaos, as populist rebels took to the streets against a few loyalist defenders. The captain suddenly found herself and those under her protection in hostile territory, surrounded by enemies eager for their blood. Wasting no time, the captain organized her small force of house guards and led them towards the harbor, where a loyalist ship waited to evacuate her masters to the safety of Old Valia. Beset by a mob of angry rebels, they fought through the streets and kept their shields between the rioters and their masters. Upon reaching the harbor, the guard captain made a desperate last stand as her fellows and masters boarded the last ship out of the port. Those aboard later recalled watching the captain battle the furious multitude, her shield glowing like the sun. Captain's Favor Motivates and invigorates the company. Heals nearby allies, but not the wielder. Healing increases with the wielder's diplomacy skill. And rear guard. Plus 10 deflection against flanking attacks. Hey, sure. Well, it's a pretty cool shield, but we have one better. What? Yeah, right away. That would be a no. Okay, more loot from the victims of the Oaxaki. And that should do it. We need to return to Atsura at the Brass Citadel and Captain Aldis at Fort Deadlight. Care to have a look right away? I'm curious what Ferrante has to say now that we've cleared out Crookspur. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that's right, we need to finish exploring. <laughs> I think there's just the one exit out of the fort.
All right, not our first ruined tower. We got five aquamarines, and that's it. <laughs> All right, to Egno's thicket. Alien settlers brought their burial traditions with them to the dead fire, which include orderly graveyards like these. A tomb rises from the earth before you. Its stone exterior is well wrought and decorated with reliefs of Tengaloa and Ngati. It likely houses the body of someone important to a local Huana tribe. So it has a unique name, but it's the same description as other burial mounds. We have four gates. A cloak of protection. Two garnets. 40 Azada Nui shells, two scrolls of withdraw, and that's it. All right, to the Cockerel Forest. North of Crookspur, the forest thickens. Wide trunk trees tower above you, their leaves forming a ceiling against the sky. A symphony of insects provide constant accompaniment of chirping and buzzing. Your path leads you into a narrow gully, the hills rising high to both sides. Whip. An arrow buries itself in the ground at your feet. You jump back and search wildly for the source, but see nothing and no one. Whip, whip. A second arrow strikes the ground beside the first, then a third, this one much closer to you than the others. Whoever watches the path above, uh, above you, clearly doesn't want you to come any closer. Now try to locate the attackers. You take cover against a tree and gesture to Aloth to search the trees for the ambushers. With a shake of the head, Aloth shrugs. Call out to the archers. The kids firing these arrows are clearly hostile. You know you'll need to choose your words with incredible care if there's any chance of them standing down. I ask a companion to speak to them. Tough call. We'll try Aloth. You could at least give us the chance to explain ourselves, Aloth calls. The arrows continue to fall. Whenever returning to that place, a dear wooden voice rings among the trees. Turn back or die. Oh. Oh man, I should have sent a dare, I think. Or maybe even Jody. Continue cautiously forward. You continue up the path, but have only taken a few steps when a hail of arrows rains down from the trees. You manage to dodge the volley, but Jody cries out. You spare a glance and see an arrow protruding from her side. A tree of kith emerge from the tree line. Fierce companion animals follow them close at heel, their teeth bared. I didn't want to fight them. I assume that they're escaped slaves. Athwena, Emok, Udongo. So I'm guessing that if you side with the slavers, they send you over here to, I guess, kill these guys. How may I help? 
Take him down. Let's do this instead. That would be a no. keep my main character alive. <laughs> Sacred Immolation does a ton of damage. That's it! Ball and chain, the flail, superb, crushing yoke, minus 2% action speed for 30 seconds to target on hit, stacks 10 times, and grants chain breaker. Freeze the wielder and any nearby allies from any dexterity afflictions or might afflictions. It's once per encounter, not once per rest, that's pretty solid. This is a crude yet effective instrument of subjugation. Countless prisoners, both slaves and convicts, bear similar fetters. While she cannot be called its owner, the most recent recipient of this shackle wore it for ten long years of servitude. But she could tolerate her thraldom no longer, she broke her own ankle to be free of the chain, and bludgeoned her captors to death with it. The makeshift flail, empowered by the escapee's desire for vengeance and refusal to remain in bondage, proved to be a powerful weapon. Indomitable 10% chance to recover immediately when critically hit in melee. Irrepressible. On hostile effect expiration, briefly do plus 15% damage with weapon. Shackles. 50% chance to inflict a random physical affliction for 8 seconds on target on scoring a crit. And subjugation. Knock down target on scoring a crit. It's not a percent chance, it's just a a prone. That's pretty good. Sure. Oh. There's some loot there. Yeah, so I think selecting Adair or Jody may have talked them down during the book event. Since they were from the Deerwood as well. I selected Aloth because one of the previous options was a, a bluff option. And Aloth has bluff. But unfortunately he didn't use that skill to actually bluff those guys, so. What's done is done, I guess. Oh, what is going on here? Oh, they're going to take over the islands since we took out the slavers.
Rickspur is a sliver of land at your back when you see a fleet approaching. They're Ramatian warships, bristling with cannons and moving at high speed. They near you, and a familiar figure doffs his cap and raises his voice in greeting. Watcher, is that really you? Oh, it's Kana! Kana Ruer grins at you with unabashed delight, shouldering past the ship's bewildered captain to lean over the railing of the ship for a better look. Kana! I should have known I'd find you out here. Anywhere that's anywhere worth seeing, I know you'll turn up. It's good to see you. I really did miss you, you know. All of our adventures. Which is why I knew you weren't dead. The Lord of Cadnua killed. Nonsense. After what? Escaping that collapsing ice cavern? Defeating not one, but three dragons? Thwarting the gods themselves. Only for you to be squished by a giant foot. Absurd. That's not how the story goes. Kana folds his arms. Well, that is how the story went, but then I got brought back to life. Where have you been? What else? Chronicling everything that happens. They weren't keen on my coming here, but I made a fuss, and well, he's going to tell the Emperor's favorite chanter he can't go off to war. Won't the Lord College be surprised to hear your name again? Kana grins toothily. The call it contrived, but the truth is, sometimes life really is that strange. I have to go. I wonder if Maya says anything if she's in your party. Yes, we both have responsibilities to see to. Can you believe it? Me, with responsibilities. Kana turtles quietly to himself. That and the captain's getting antsy. Take care of yourself, my friend. We'll ride a shanty in your honor. The captain finally manages to push his way to the railing, and bows stiffly at the waist. Fair skies, Donald, and well done. We'll see to the port's defenses. The Rautian soldiers gathered on deck wear heavy brigandine and blades that glint and flash at their sides. They look ready for anything. Who are you? We're the uh, Rukwapa, who serve as the Ranganui's most skilled warriors. The troops behind them cross their arms in unison. Kana follows suit a few seconds later, grimacing sheepishly. Atsura didn't mention any Rawatayan ships. He looks uncomfortable. I would not presume to know Atsura Nui's business. My orders are to secure the port against pirates and slavers. He said he couldn't help us with it. So why is he sending ships now? I mean, I know that we're being manipulated, but... I mean, I feel like the, the message would be the same, right? The captain of the lead vessel bows as his ship draws up alongside yours. Fair skies, Donal, and well done. We'll see to the port's defenses. Wait, we've already read that. Oh, calm seas. Farewell. He crosses his forearms over his chest as his ship pulls away. So if I go back here... I can assume the fort's occupied by Rawatayans, and maybe some new merchants. Mm -hmm. A quick look around just to see. I pick up these bodies at some point. It's a shame that Kana appears, but you can't take him into your party. Not that we need more chanters as is, but... I guess they don't have a named NPC leading them. That's fair. Alright. Let's get out of here, uh, see if we can go speak to Ferrante real quick to see how disappointed he is in us. Not that I care. 
he aligned with slavers, I no longer want to work with him. Or the uh, Valian Trading Company, for that matter. But we can talk to Castle when we go back to Nekataka to turn in the, uh, the quest to Atsura. I don't know, he might have yeah, new stock. Have right away. When one makes a business arrangement with me, I expect them to honor it, Kasita. I seem to recall having told him that I don't work with slavers. He's like, ah, oh, well, if you change your mind. Need I remind you, the entire point of dealing with a chaffed cookspur was to make inroads with them. My special associate. He tugs at his sleeve, cuffs irritably. However, we shall consider this an opportunity lost and put it behind us. You do still hold immense value as an investment for my success. The captain nods. Come, let us share a fine conversation. I am listening, Amiko. What weighs on your mind in this... Oh, here's another quest for me. Right. You have my ear, Kes... Maybe he won't give us another quest until we turn in the current quest to Captain Aldis. Or she'll probably have something for us after. What can I do for you? What do you want? Alright, we'll make for Fort Deadlight and speak with Captain Aldis next time. Make sure that we have candied nuts. I don't have sugar. Possible we'd have some already in our inventory. But we don't. Well. It's possible one of the merchants at Four Dead Light sells sugar, so we can make up for it there. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Next time we'll speak with Captain Aldis, and then sail for Nakataka, and speak to Atsura and Castle. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.